Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a really cool one for you guys. We're going to be taking a look at this LFF wireless color weather station. So taking a look at the box, it's pretty basic here. This is the LWS 200. As you guys can see, here is what comes included, and that is what the station is going to look like. Of course, links to this down below. Big shout out and thank you to LFF for sending this out free for review. So let's go ahead, crack it open, and see what we've got inside. All right, so first things first, we're going to crack through some of this tape on the box here. A little beast mode on the box here. There we go. And let's see what we've got. Looks like, first off, we have the power adapter, so that's awesome that that's included. Here we have one of the sensors and the console itself decent size here has a nice trim to it it's not just flat black it has some nice silver on the back see three AAA batteries go in there I'm assuming that's battery backup which is great love to see that when these weather stations come included with that is there anything else in the box here nope nothing else in the box except for this little instruction manual which hopefully we won't need but I might take it to the box a couple of times just to check things out and make sure I'm doing this right. So let me go ahead, get this set up, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Wow, so in case you guys lose your manual, here is uh, the first pages here, which are probably the most important. Uh, this is what comes included. So you get the head unit, one outdoor sensor, the user manual, and the adapter. And then here is kind of how you work the display. Looks very easy to do, uh, but in case you lost yours, uh, here it is for you. You guys can see what it's all about. I believe this even has atomic clock capability, which is Awesome. I personally think all weather stations should come included with atomic clock capabilities, but let's go ahead and set this up, like I said, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, so I am back. I went ahead and put in three AAA batteries, and that is the power backup. As you can see, it wants to take power straight from this uh, cord. This is straight to the wall. Uh, so that's how it will get its power most of the time. But in the event of a power outage, like during severe weather or something, you want this to keep working. That's what the three AAA batteries are for, so I put them in there. So we should be all set to go for that. The intriguing part is that this is already pulling in some data. I'm not entirely sure where it's getting that outdoor weather data from. This is actually very accurate to what it is outside right now, so I do believe that this weather station is actually picking up from one of my other ones. I have multiple other weather stations out there, actually three right now. So it's probably pulling from one of those. The indoor sensor is actually built into this. So ignore this side for right now. I don't have this set up yet, but I will have that soon. And I will let you guys know how it goes. So I'm going to set this up next to some of my other weather consoles where I can kind of calibrate it and make sure everything seems to be very accurate. And I'll come back in a week or so and splice that straight into the same video. So I'll see you guys in just a bit. All right, guys, we are back at it, and I have been using this for about a week, a week and a half. I have to say, for the money, this thing is well worth it. So let's quickly go over some of the features. I'm trying to get the least amount of glare possible on here, but uh, there's a lot of studio lights, and this is a dark background, but I must assure you that the screen looks great in most lighting conditions. Uh, it actually has a couple different modes. So we got this one, this one, this one, and pretty much off. And I'm going to talk more about these here in a second, but for now, let's just put it at the max. And the viewing angles aren't the best, but once it's set up, it's great. Anyways, you got your outdoor sensor here, which mine is already mounted outside, so I didn't bring it back in. I will say the outdoor sensor that comes with this is awesome. It has the temperature and humidity on the screen of the little device. So if you didn't want to use it outdoors, you could actually just set it somewhere in your house and actually read what the temperature and humidity is straight off of that without even using this piece. So that thing is awesome. Anyways, it's got the outdoor temperature right here as well as the humidity. It also gives you a trend. So it tells you if it's going up, down, or steady. Uh, you also have the predicted forecast right here. So right now it's predicting some rain or precipitation. Then down here you have your atomic clock, which is fantastic. Uh, it is hard for it to latch on to the atomic time, uh, but just make sure it's kind of near a window. And if it's latched on within the last 24 hours or the last night, it'll have a little icon right here with a little beacon so that you know that it's all up to date. Mine was just connected like a day or two ago, so the timing is pretty much perfect. 9.14 p.m. Tuesday, 11.15, you got your whole date right there. Then you have the indoor temperature, which I was emailing LFF about this. Um, I was having some issues with it. It seemed like the temperature was always about two or three degrees high, and the humidity was always a couple percentage points off. And I was like, what the heck is going on with this? Like, is there a way to calibrate it? And there is not a way to calibrate it. However, I found the problem. The issue was literally the backlighting. So I, use, I like to have it on max brightness, but that generates a little bit of heat inside of it, which actually apparently uh, affects the indoor temperature. So if you just dr drop it down to right here or off, uh, you will get much more accurate readings. I know this isn't gonna come through well on camera, but for me personally, I like to keep it right here in my house. And it doesn't look like it's visible here, but uh, I keep it in kind of a darker hallway of my house that I walk through and this is plenty visible and then this is completely off. So uh, even if you just dim it to here, it'll be a little more accurate, but here and here are the most accurate for the indoor temperatures. If you keep it on the super bright setting, 
that little bit of heat that it generates from the screen seems to affect the sensor inside and makes it a little bit too high. So if you don't mind that, then uh, just always subtract a couple degrees and you'll be good. So let's talk about the top row here. So I got time set, alarm, up, down, screen dimmer, which is what I was using there, time zone, Celsius, Fahrenheit, channel, and wave. On the back, we've got the battery. So if you do lose power, it will continue to work, albeit it will be pretty dim. You can brighten it, but that'll use a lot of battery. Um, so yeah, that is a quick look at the device. It does have a stand here, which is great. So you can kind of prop it up. Obviously the viewing angle is not gonna work here, but if this is sitting on a table and you're glancing as you walk past it, perfect. It looks really good. The screen is pretty vibrant. I will say that. And lastly, I want to tell you there are alarms in here. So if I press the alarm button, you guys can see right there, I can enable it like this or disable it. And then let's go back to the time. And there we go. So overall thoughts uh, for the budget category uh, that this is in, this is pretty inexpensive compared to other weather stations. Uh, if you just want something simple, that gives you your outdoor and your indoor and a forecast and atomic clock, which is always great to have. Uh, this is something to look at. Like I said, it took me a couple days to figure out that the screen was actually generating the heat and messing these up. That's why we actually review these products. I take my time and I check them out and I make sure that they're good before I do my videos. So overall, this is a solid product for the price. Check it out, links down below. If you wanna see more weather station reviews, we've got multiple on our channel. Head over to our channel and search up weather station. You'll see a few other uh, brands and types. So if you want something that's much more high-end, mid-grade or budget, I consider this to be a budget uh, just because it's not a full weather station, but it gives you the basics and pretty much everything you need to know on a daily basis. So check it out, the LFF weather station, links to it down below. If you like the video, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.